afternoon or good evening. This is Pamela, and you are watching Pam Entertainment TV, where we review movies, television series, and incidents in pop culture just to see how those incidents affect our daily lives. Tonight, we are getting ready to review Hawkeye Season 1, Episode 3, entitled Echoes. Uh, if we go back to my last uh, review... I was a little confused about Kate and Kate's motivation and why she was doing the things that she was doing. Uh, she went after uh, Armand Duskane because he had talked kind of foul to her mother. Then she stumbles into a auction, a black market auction. That's where she gets, that's where she uh, acquires the Ronin suit. She puts the Ronin suit on. Uh, she goes over to the Duskane house in the Ronin suit, and we come up and we find that uh, Armand Duskane is dead. Uh, we see her inter her interactions with her mom. Her mom seems kind of, uh, I don't know why I'm getting villainous out of her, because she doesn't seem to be bothered by too much. She doesn't seem to be bothered at all. Uh, she runs a security system. Her husband was killed uh, during the Chitauri uh, invasion back in 2012. So she's running that business. She doesn't seem to be too bothered by too many things. She's pulled Kate into this business. Because Kate got the Ronin um, suit, and apparently they got this suit from when the Avengers uh, headquarters were demolished by Thanos, they are, they are selling it on the black market. She gets in the suit. Clint Barker, who is in New York, sees her in that suit on the television. And then he goes to her to retrieve the suit. Then they have a whole big uh, folly about trying to get the suit. And then Clint trying to keep the suit. And and uh, I don't know if he wants to destroy it or just keep it. I'm not really sure what he, what he wants to do with the suit. But he wants to get it off the street because it has a connotation. Because you remember... When the blip happened, you know, Clint's whole family uh, went into the uh, the other verse, wherever they were. And so he became Ronan because of his grief. He was trying to wipe out all the criminal activity on Earth because he couldn't get to Thanos like he wanted to. So we're getting ready to start Season 1, Episode 3, entitled Echoes. So... In the first little montage, we're introduced to Maya. Maya is a young, young girl in 2007. Uh, she is living with what looks like to be her grandfather or her uncle. I'm not really sure. Uh, Maya is deaf. Maya can't hear. That's what deaf is, Pam. Uh, her her grandfather teaches her uh, a lot of different skills, a lot of different... Um, make sure that she's in, in, in martial arts. She grows up. And so around-ish, uh, whenever Thanos snapped... We get the Ronin, and the Ronin comes in, and he kills her grandfather and all of his crew. Now, they're wearing sweatshirts, so I'm wondering if, if they're part of the tracks. He was part of the tracksuit uh, mafia. So she's going to be seeking revenge against the Ronin for killing her family. So as we left off on the last episode, uh, after we left off on the last episode, uh, uh, we see Clint and Kate tied up, and the tracksuit mafia have them. We are then introduced to an adult, Maya. Maya comes to Clint. She, she recognizes who he is, and she uh, recognizes or she understands who Kate is. Her and Clint, Clint is, she thought Clint was, um, Clint is hearing impaired, but he's not deaf. And uh, he signs, but he doesn't know how to sign like Maya knows how to sign with the, with the proficiency and efficiency of signing. Uh, we see them figuring out, she's asking Clint about Ronan and everything like that. Clint says the Black Widow killed Ronan and she was like, uh, and then the Black Widow is dead. And he was like, yes. He said, well, how do you know? And he says, because I was there. And so she's like, well, Ronan is dead and the Black Widow is dead. And she doesn't seem to believe that. She then grabs Kate by the throat and she's like, why do you have this, the, the suit on? And Kate basically tells her they were selling it at the auction and I put it on, but I didn't understand what it meant. I didn't know it was the Ronin suit, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. So, uh, Maya begins to choke, choke Kate up. Uh, the guy that's with Maya who's signing for her kind of pulls Maya away and say, Hey, 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 slow down. Wait a minute. What's going on? Because she seems to be very upset. She doesn't believe Clint when he says that the Ronin is dead. 
And basically, Clinton is telling the truth, but not at the same time. Because you remember, uh, Black Widow got him to stop being the Ronin so he could go back, so they could do the heist and everything, so they could bring the people back. So, he, yeah, he, he's telling the truth that the Ronin no more, is no more, but he's not saying that he is the Ronin. Clint escapes, and now the Track Scoop Mafia is looking for him. So we have a great little fight montage between uh, Hawkeye and Maya. Hawkeye ended up getting the best because, you know, he is the best with the bow and arrow. Uh, Kate, he uh, he snares the arrow so that he can let get Kate free. And Kate gets in there and she holds her own. So I'm not mad at that. That was a cute little fight scene. Cute little fight scene. They get away and what looked like a, what is that, a Lincoln? Is that a Lincoln? Big old, big body Lincoln? Child, they doing a car chase down New York City. It looked like a big body Lincoln. I can't see the emblem. And a, a, a delivery truck. And I can't see the other car behind them, child. A mess. Kate about to shoot this dog on arrow. She don't know what it is. <laughs> so, okay, so this is interesting. He's telling her what to, to do. But she he can't hear her because his hearing aid has been bad. So this is a pretty cute banter. Is that a Lincoln Continental? Girl, Kate done took an arrow that was blowing up stuff. Child, Kate gonna kill folks out here. <laughs> the little blow up Santa got ran over but sprung right back up like baby we finna sell these trees honey they are flying through the streets of New York City child just a mess he had a pin particle arrow <laughs> a pin particle arrow come on Clint baby you better learn how to shoot and shoot well cause Hawkeye is Hawkeye for real for real you out here playing Hawk out. Okay, they finna drop off, drop yourselves off. Oh, they got on the they got on the train. So they done flipped over, got off the bridge, got onto the train. They looking good. Lord have mercy. Uh, Clint looked tired. Clint, like I'm fooling around with this young gal. I am too tired for words. <laughs> they go to Rogers the musical. I think I like this better when they're doing a lot more action instead of me trying to overthink why things are going on and trying to figure out. The motivations behind the characters and the villains. I think I'm liking it better just by just watching the action. Wow, we are listening to how Clint hears. It's very muffled. Very muffled. I'm wondering, is Maya, is she over the, the um criminal organization? I'm not, I'm, I'm just confused what her role is. Did she take over from a grandfather? Kate keeps talking to Hawkeye, and Hawkeye can't hear you. So they, they've gone to a, a, a woman that can fix the hearing aid for Hawkeye. So Kate and Hawkeye, Hawkeye is trying to tell her that, you know, this life of helping people, there are a lot of sacrifices that you have to take uh, when you're trying to help people. Um, also, we find out that Maya is head of the, the, the tracksuit gang and that they answer to a man named Uncle. So I'm curious as to know who is Uncle. That they answer to Uncle. Uh, Maya is hell-bent and determined that she is going to get Ronin with all cost. She is going to, uh, she is going to get Ronin with all cost. And to the chagrin of her interpreter, that's what I'm going to call him. I don't know his name just of yet. To the chagrin of the interpreter, the interpreter is trying to explain to her that we're supposed to keep a low profile. And if you're going after Ronin, that compromises us as a low-key criminal organization. But my, Maya seems to have been determined that she is going to go after Clint. Well, she was going to go after the Ronin. And so she was like, you need to go look into Clint Barton and see what's going on with Clint Barton. Well, you know that he's Hawkeye. So I'm, 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 maybe you're trying to figure out who his family is so that you can go and get to his family thinking that that's going to lead you to Ronin. I, I don't know. I don't know. But Kate is uh, Kate is sitting over here starry eyed and ha and, and excited because she wants to be a I guess a superhero. So Kate and uh, Hawkeye sneak into her her mother's penthouse because uh, you know remember I told you earlier that Kate's mom is a security owns a security firm, and so she sneaks in there to um, get information on Kazi, and she finds out that he works for a company called Sloan Industries. Somebody comes home. And Kate is so super focused, she didn't even hear somebody come in the door. Them some loud footsteps. Nobody hears them. <laughs> That's the end. So Kate is so into getting on the keyboard and kicking, she didn't hear that Jack came in. Clint hears it. He goes to check it out, and Jack puts a, a, a knife, I mean, a sword to his throat. So that's the end of the episode, y'all. 
Um, again, like I said before, I'm just going to watch the episode for the action and then just allow them to give me the information as to what they're doing. And we're going to let it unfold as that because I think the first two episodes I was spending too much time trying to figure out why Kate was doing what she was doing. She's just heroing. She's just doing what a hero is supposed to do. She's stumbling through it. So I'm going to put her an intern, a hero intern in training and let her stumble through it. Um, I actually enjoyed this episode. I actually enjoyed the influx of the new characters with Maya, seeing Maya's backstory, uh, seeing how they are taking uh, Clint's hearing impairment and working that into the story with some co comedic uh, relief with Kate always trying to talk to him. He's, uh, first his hearing aid wasn't in, and then you find out that he's turning that hearing aid on, off <laughs> when Kate gets to talking. So I'm... I'm, I'm, I'm I'm going to continue to watch it. Like I said, I was a little unsure about the first two episodes. But this episode right here was, uh, to me, uh, a, a better episode. I'm going to let it flow. Y'all tell me what y'all think about this. We'll see you this time next week. Uh, please like. Please comment. Please share. And we'll see you this time next week. Bye-bye. <laughs>